So we have come through another session where we will be discussing the next topic about the chapter called controlling. So before we can move into the controlling the next topic, uh, I really want to know if you're able to understand the starting of the chapter that's controlling. That's the meaning of controlling we completed and the features of controlling. If you've had any doubts, have you got the doubts clarified? Have you sent me a message? Okay, and the more uh, motivation you give me to do the videos, it would help me to teach you better as well. So please uh, subscribe so that you can get the latest videos and it would be easy for you to study and it will motivate me as well. So today we would uh, study the topic called as importance of controlling and we will finish the demerits of controlling. So let me not waste much. Let's directly move into the topics to be completed. So meaning and features have already completed in the previous topic that in our first session in the chapter. Now importance of controlling will come for a four marker and limitations of controlling will also come for a four marker. Now importance of controlling can come as an eight marker too because there are six points. So probably one mark can go for the introduction. That's the meaning of controlling and another mark can go for the uh, conclusion but uh, it's always better you study importance limitations of controlling as a four marker so importance can come for an eight marker but usually comes for a four marker so it's better you study all the six points so in the next session i will complete relationship between planning and controlling and controlling process then i'll take a separate session for the techniques of controlling that's modern and traditional techniques so today we will complete importance of controlling and limitations of controlling. Now, what is with the meaning of controlling? I'll just give you a brief uh, brief up of what is the meaning of controlling. Controlling is a continuous process. It starts with the topic called as planning and then it is it ends with controlling. Both go hand in hand. Both the functions go hand in hand. Why? Because in planning, you lay out the basic plans, but when it comes to controlling, you are putting it, even after putting it into action, you are really checking the performance of the employees. So that is what is happening in this particular topic called controlling. So then uh, what is happening here? The activity is whatever is being performed by the employees. You are checking whether it is being performed effectively and efficiently without wasting of any resources. So, you know, resources refers to finance. It refers to raw materials. It refers to technology and it also refers to human resources. So all these user, uh, resources should be used effectively and efficiently. Now, coming to the importance of controlling, which we will be learning today. Now, why is controlling important? You think for yourself and see if the employee's performance is not measured, what would happen? Okay, employees would be dissatisfied to work. They would not uh, be motivated to work. They would waste the resources. They would say, OK, there is no plan there. We do not know what to do. So we would do our work in our own way. Then if, uh, the if, imagine if there is no particular plan in the organization, what would happen? The employees would start doing their own work. They will least be bothered of what is happening. There is no discipline. So that is the reason if you think of what will be the negative. You will get to know why controlling is so important. So why is it important? It is very important to motivate the employee. Every time an employee is doing good, I give them a lot of awards. I give them a lot of bonus. I encourage him. I motivate him. Why? Because if I want the employee to perform well, I need to motivate the employee to do excellently well. So controlling is very important. So that is where the employee will also feel satisfied and happy to work. And it helps to make sure that you're using the resources to the maximum or to the optimum. And you're checking the accuracy of standards. What is accuracy of standards? Whatever I, you remember, I've taught you standard performance is set by the organization. Goal set by the organization. You're saying standard performance is nothing but 100 emails the organization is asking you to do. So what are you doing? You're judging the accuracy of the standards. Are you really checking whether these 100 emails are the employees are able to do or they're not able to do? So like that, you have discipline, you have facilitates coordination. It helps all the team people to work together. It helps in improving the performance. It helps to minimize the errors and achieve the 
goals so in detail i have already put here for you in with the pictures the main reason i have put up sentences is so that it helps you to study as well and uh, i'll highlight the points as i am going to teach you so that it's easy for you to understand now accomplishing organizational goals you know planning helps in accomplishing organizational goals organization helps in accomplishing so if you actually see certain uh, words in certain sentences will always continue throughout all your management functions because without which you cannot function so accomplishing of organizational goals what does it refer to uh, controlling helps to compare your ap with your sp it helps to compare your actual performance with your standard performance so that whatever goals have been set by the organization is set really proper that is what they want to track okay they want to track they want to check if the goals are set proper for the organization to achieve okay so the second one is judging accuracy so again i'll tell you accomplishing organizational goals means they'll check whether your ap is equal to your sp whether employees will be able to achieve these this that is the ap uh, when compared to sp so they have to track whether whatever standard performance they have set whether it is proper or is there any deviations that needs to come in now this second one is judging accuracy of standards what is accuracy accuracy is nothing but you are check checking the accurate are employees performing their are the employees doing their jobs really good or is there any problem in the way they are doing their job so you are going to give them a plan you are going to tell them to follow the plan so that their objectives are accurate accurate means it is specific or they are able to do it really well without any problem so an efficient control system keeps a careful check on the changes in the taking place in the organization and in the environment so every time you are checking what is the employees performance with the standard performance so if there is any changes you are accurately telling the employee this is how you are judging and you are telling the employee this is the mistakes where you are doing so there is a control system in next one is making efficient use of resources resources refers to the three words or the four words i've told you it refers to finance it refers to raw materials it refers to let's say technology and it refers to human resources okay so what are they saying manager has to check that there is no wastage of resources or the resources are not getting spoiled okay you're not basically wasting resources you are following proper guidelines to ensure that you're utilizing the resources to the maximum like example when i was working in the mnc organization we could take a lot of printouts and we could take a lot of xerox copies there was no uh, head count on how many printouts we can take for a particular email so so uh, there were so many times that people used to waste a lot of paper you would actually literally, literally see paper lying down here and there so once all of a sudden they came out a rule by the management telling that only with the approval of your manager can you take a print out or can you take a xerox so that time what happened there was uh, they ensured that people are using the resources to the maximum and they are efficiently utilizing the resources so if one side the paper is printed they would take us the rocks at the other side because the paper should not get wasted so what are they doing they are cutting down the resources what they are using to ensure that it has been used to the efficient okay efficiently they are utilizing the resources so who is helping you in all this controlling is what is helping you to ensure that things are used to efficiently and effectively to the maximum next one is improving employee motivation now what is happening how are you improving employees motivation definitely you are telling the employee this is a standard performance that is 100 emails that you need to do so what are you doing here you are ensuring you are telling the employee based on your actual performance that you are providing we are going to provide you a lot of uh, let's say uh, job security we are providing you a lot of benefits based on which your standard of living will improve your relationship with the organization will also improve and your you will feel comfortable with your manager also and you never know when you will get promoted 
so what is happening here overall employees motivation is getting increased here why because of the standards that is being set by the organization and the employee knows that he has to achieve the standards so these are the words that you will learn in this particular uh, point next one is ensuring order and discipline now what is happening you're telling the employee this is the standard performance of 100 emails what you need to achieve so what are you doing you are setting an order for him you're setting a discipline where he knows that this is what i need to do this is what i have to do so what is happening it creates an atmosphere of order and discipline in the organization and it helps to minimize dishonest behavior there you will ensure that there is honesty and employees will not be able to cheat the organization because there are a lot of rules and regulations that is laid in the organization so the management and the employees know which is the right way they are going and which is the wrong way that they are going the last one is facilitating coordination in action coordination refers to the word called integration and unity in whatever they are doing so once when standard performance and lot of rules and regulations everything is set in place employees will start to achieve the organizational goals so what are they saying every department and every division and section and team in the organization has their own standards so once the employees know that they have their own standards they would start working towards achieving those standards how unitedly they would stand and unitedly they would start working towards achieving the objectives or their standards so that individually they don't get affected but as a team they would ensure that they are standing strong they are working together to achieve their targets so these are the importance of uh, controlling the topics are very very simple and most of the explanation you already know it's self-explanatory now coming down to the limitations of controlling you just have four limitations of controlling and please mark it very important i hope as i'm teaching you you're making note of it and you're marking it important this is a four marker and it's a very important four marker so the first one is difficulty in setting quantitative standards why is difficult to set quantitative standards the reason it's difficult is because now today i'm telling you you have to do 100 emails when i say you have to do 100 emails i like the example i told you monday you're able to do 60 why because the calls that were coming was too high for you to uh, accept the calls you the only person to take calls so what happens you have to do 100 emails plus take calls so what is happening your standard performance your actual performance you're not able to achieve 100 so let's say tuesday you're able to do 100 next again wednesday you're able to do only 80 90 why because there's someone in your team that is absent so what are they telling you when you are setting standards this standard is set on quantity basis that is 100 is nothing but quantity it's not quality it is quantity now what are they telling you certain standards like customer satisfaction product quality are difficult to measure because they cannot be set in quantitative terms now if you have to like example again let's come back to the example i'm telling you 100 emails you have to do it's very easy for me to tell you 100 emails you'll do now what will you do you would also start doing these 100 emails you will hardly be checking whether the quality the way you are framing the sentence the way you're providing information whether it is right or wrong you least be bothered in your head you only know that i have to finish 100 emails then i have to go home i have i hardly have time so what are they telling when it comes to customer satisfaction so if the customer is asking you payment of let's say invoice copy a b c but what are you doing because you are not reading the email properly you are just saying payment of invoice a b you're forgetting to provide c now is the customer satisfied no so that is the reason that they say when you are setting the goals in quantitative standards when you want to measure in quantitative standards you always have to check whether customers are satisfied because there are many times where customers will not be satisfied then the next one is product quality 
are difficult to measure why product quality because when you say you have to manufacture 100 candles in a day it is very difficult for the employee to manufacture 100 candles in a day i'm just giving you a random example so what happens the employee would start doing half an hour work he would not feel very happy to give the best quality so do you think the product will have good quality no so what are they saying when you're setting standards please ensure that you're setting standards which is achievable by the employees don't just set standards which namesake the employees are able to achieve but uh, satisfaction wise quality wise they are not able to provide the best like example i'll tell you well, when I was working in the Accenture, we used to do a lot of emails processes. Uh, so what used to happen was most of the time when we used to have a sudden meeting or our team leader says, no, no, we have a meeting, just uh, lock your computers and come, lock your laptops and come. What used to happen to us is we would be piled up with so much of work because our target was given every single day. We knew our targets. So what used to happen was suddenly these meetings used to interrupt our work and sometimes we'll least be bothered about what is happening in the meeting. But still what is happening when we come back after the meeting of one and two hours, we will be hardly having one two hours of time so that we can log out and go home. So what we happen to do is we don't happen to read the emails in detail right and if it, if there are like huge emails we would keep it for the next day why because we do not have time so what are they saying when you're setting uh, standards please ensure you're setting your standards you can achieve your uh, you can check it qualitatively simply namesake we should never go ahead to uh, to uh, put on standards or uh, yeah put on standards so the second one is little control on external factors. Please know this word external factors. External factors refers to your uh, political, your legal, your technology, everything outside the organization. Whatever is happening inside the organization, you can control it. Why? Because it is within your control. But whatever is happening outside the organization, nothing is in your control. Basic example, I'll tell you, you are having, let's say you're owning an MNC company, you are, doing a, you are doing a really good job by satisfying the customers. All of a sudden, because of the COVID virus, your company had to shut down. Now tell me, because is it because of the internal things that's happening within the organization, you're closing down your organization or is it because of the external force? Yes, it's very true. It's because of the external factor only, you are forced to close your organization and ask the employees to work from home, right? So what are they saying? Every business organization is affected by the external factors such as government policies, technology changes, competition. Along with this, you can also add legal environment, then political environment. All these will come. Okay, there are five uh, let's say uh, environmental factors which is affecting your, our organization so what is happening indian companies are facing a tough competition with these multinational companies why because multinational companies most of them can even give internet facility and laptop facility and ask the employees to log in from home but when it comes to a small public sector or a private sector let's say private sector company the Indian companies are the ones who are getting hit because they don't have any other person from uh, abroad who is helping them or funding them. So that is the reason uh, controlling has little factors and external uh, forces because we don't know what is going to happen in the future. Who's going to be our next president? Who's going to be our what technology wise? How good are we? How good is the organizations going to improve and how is it going to affect us? We really don't know. Third one is resistance from employees. Now what is happening here? Control is often resisted by employees. These They see it as a restriction on their freedom. That's nothing but resistance of employees refers to the word called change. Okay, how is it happening? Okay, for instance, employees might object when they are kept under strict watch with the help of closed CCTV cameras. Okay, now I'll, again, I'll give you an example. When we used to work in, uh, when I was working in an MNC organization, we were very happy uh, telling that it's a basic thing, okay? We didn't have these CCTV cameras uh, which used to continuously monitor us what we are doing or how we are doing a job. So even if you are taking a break, we would actually take a break for like extra, like let's say 15-20 minutes because there was no CCTV camera. 
but all of a sudden after like 6 months or 7 months after we started working the organization they started installing a lot of these latest cameras which would actually see what time we go out what time we come in and they started having a track of who is going out how long they taking a break all this they started monitoring so any time our managers and our team leaders would go to a room and they would actually check how many hours we have gone for break who we are talking to are we um, we we would literally not have the freedom to talk to our friends the minute we used to enter the organization we would just say hi 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 and then how, yeah how are you doing and then just go and sit in our workstation and start working why because we have standard performance that we have to achieve we have things that we have to deliver and for that they are keeping a close watch on what we are doing and how we are doing so what is happening even if we feel like we have to change and do something good for the organization we don't feel like doing something good for the organization reason because they are they are keeping a very close watch on us so any time you go and tell your manager i'm not well i want to do this he would actually tell you but i see that in this uh, cctv tv camera footage that you're all nice you are enjoying with your friends you're smiling with your friends so what is happening there is no matter of trust here so control is often resisted by employees they see it as a restriction on their freedom they feel that there's something that they cannot do if they want to improve the process also they cannot do okay for instance employees might object when they are kept under the strict watch of cctv camera cctv means something but it's cameras where you have it in most of the places now the fourth one the last one is costly affair what is a costly affair controlling is a costly affair why because now you are checking according to your planning you're checking according to your all your management functions and you're setting the standard performance telling that it, it will be 100 a hundred emails a day but all of a sudden if the employees are not able to achieve 100 emails a day you have to again change that 100 emails into let's say whatever is achievable target of the employees now when i'm telling you in just layman's term you feel ah oh, it's just easy by changing numbers no but there's a lot of things that goes behind what i'm saying they'll have to do a proper uh, research where the capability development team they will be called a capability development team this particular team will come and check what is the need for them to reduce the standard performance or and if they want to keep the standard performance the same what else can they do to bring in people so that they can help to maintain the standard performance all these are the things which will be checked so what is it you have to spend a lot of money which is not very easy for the organizations to do so rather than they spending a lot of money what they do they'll pressurize the employees to do the job so because of which those employees who are really who really feel that they need the job will stick along and they will do extra amount of work in the organization but certain other people would say i did not sign up for this if it's not this job i would go and get another job so what is happening controlling is a very costly process it involves lot of expenditure time and effort okay expenditure is nothing but money time is nothing but i told you there'll be this capability development team they'll come and they will research whether really that their standard performance has to be reduced whether really the, uh, the employees are not able to do their job all this they would check it would it definitely takes a lot of time and money why because all of them are paid salary good amount of salary so what is happening managers must ensure that the cost of installing and operating a control system should not exceed the benefits derived from it that means when you are setting a standard performance in the initial itself you need to decide whether this standard performance is going to be the final you need to ensure that you motivate the employees push the employees to achieve the standard performance so what are they saying initially when you are setting the target as 100 for standard performance ensure that you are doing it really well by researching properly by checking properly just like that do not go ahead and set standards otherwise it's going to become a very big problem and data the organization again has to shell out a lot of money so we come to the end of our importance and our limitation of a uh, controlling topic okay for a difference i put a new slide here front of you probably a cartoonic uh, slide so that it will at least uh, you can concentrate on your uh, on the slide 
and probably you can give a small smile and think of the points what we learnt today what we what are the points that you will remember in importance what are the points that you remembered in uh, let's say demerits of controlling so please ensure that you are listening to the video okay because these two topics will definitely come for four marker or may come for an eight marker that's importance of controlling and please let me know if you want any other ways for me to teach you so that it will be easy for you to understand or shall i continue the same way your motivation is something that's going to go make me go forward to help you learn the topics so please ensure you subscribe and like the videos so that i will stay motivated to teach you better thank you so much stay blessed